pretty well now. Uh, this guy, Captain Sully Sullenberger, rolling in the deep, Adele. Who could forget? Who could forget the miracle on the Hudson really is what it's now known by that Captain Sully Sullenberger successfully piloted in January 2009. All 155 people on board walked away unhurt. He was just telling us in the commercial break that everyone now refers to themselves by where they were seated. Uh, 25F, 13D on board this plane, still getting together after uh, a couple of years. He's got a new book, second book since... Uh, since this happened in 2009. It's called Making a Difference. It focuses on other people's stories of inspiration and leadership. And Captain, good morning. Great to be with you. All four of you. Thank you. For all four me. of us. You get all four of us. And before we talk about this book here, I do want to ask, I wanted your two cents, because obviously um, what happened in 2009 with the Hudson it was birds, Yes. right? So now have you heard about the FAA is now investigating this pilots up in the air uh, a couple thousand feet up in uh, Denver, in, in Colorado, and sees, we, they don't even know for sure, it might have been some sort of uh, remote control mechanical, you know, uh, a plane. Uh, you can hear the fear in the pilot's voice uh, with the air traffic and, uh, control. What do you make of that? Well, it's hard to know what it was. In fact, on occasion, even Mylar balloons, a big group of them can get up to several thousand feet. And as you fly past them, it, you know, the rush is intense. So you normally don't see anything close to your airplane in flight, and it would get your attention. Describe the nerves. The nerves. Well, it would, it would be a momentary startle, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad nothing bad happened. Okay. To the book. To the book, Making a Difference, Stories of Vision and Courage from America's Leaders. There are a lot of leaders in here that you're inspired by, that you got this amazing chance to, to talk yes. to, uh, run through a couple of these. Well, they all are people inspired and uh, that I admire. And I had a chance to do these incredible in-depth interviews. So I got a chance to ask the questions for a change <laughs> and find out what makes them tick and what common th themes there are. Michelle and Ree, Admiral Thad Allen. Jim Senegal, the CEO of Costco. Uh, you know former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, Robert Reich, former Labor Secretary. Just, I, I chose people from intentionally diverse fields, some well-known, some not well-known at all, but all of whom share certain common traits, like they are willing to check their egos at the door to serve a cause rather than just their own needs. And they're, they're able to touch people in a very personal way and make a difference in people's lives. And so I just, I had to put these incredible, sometimes funny, but always inspiring stories in the page and share them. You know, part of your story, uh, I had no idea, six months before that you land this plane um, on the Hudson River, you have this conversation with your boss, right? And you have this conversation, I'm going to quote you, this is from the book, because you, you really wanted to establish yourself as this aviation safety expert, you know, we're thinking maybe cultural changes need to happen um, at your airline, and you said, the boss told you, quote, we don't do big initiatives here. I said to myself, I'm 57 years old and I've implemented safety practices, taught team building, had a successful career. Maybe if I work hard and fortune smiles on me, I can find another way to contribute. And I feel that way now. After flight 1549 I'm in the sure Hudson, you do. after my crew and I and, and New York Waterway and all the first responders saved lives, if I work very hard and I leverage what I have learned before, it's possible that in other ways I can make a difference. One of the things I'm working on right now, along with many others, is applying to patient safety and medicine the things we've learned about safety in aviation. You know, in this country alone, every year, including hospital errors and hospital-acquired conditions, 200,000 lives are lost that are preventable deaths. Mm. You know, you have some criticism. I've read some of the articles uh, when you're talking about the book for leaders in, in business and leaders in politics right now. And you've now interviewed, I, I would assume, dozens of leaders that you've talked to. If you could say, here's a Mount Rushmore of current leadership for this country, and it doesn't have to just be political, but who exemplifies what you're looking for in a leader? You know. I don't think we have to have a, a Mount Rushmore of leaders. I think we have people around us all the time hmm. who in their daily lives, ordinary folks. ordinary folks, are making a difference. It's just that they haven't been as publicly tested. We don't know yet who they all are, but we can identify them by their actions. They're the ones who, who have real values and then, believe it or not, choose to actually live by them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we have people around that. Well, your, around your own personal story illustrates. And that, so I think, I think we need more people who can do two things, who can look beyond their own needs and who can occasionally at least take a longer view. Um, you know, people have asked me on occasion what my political affiliation is and uh, uh, people ask me if I was a Republican or a Democrat in this very polarized environment, but my answer is always the same, that I'm an American first and I vote as an American first and I, I, that's one of my messages too, is that we need to look to the long term, we need to get away from this, this my way or the highway 
uh, environment and do what's right for for all of us. Final are, you, are, are you hopeful that uh, American <laughs> I leadership? Am. Will... I am. There hopeful. is hope. And in fact, when you read these interviews, whether it's Admiral Thad Allen, who's visited Bethesda and uh, seeing the courage of the people in this generation who have met these great challenges with grace. Um, there's no doubt that we have people right now who have these qualities. We just need to get more of them uh, involved in leadership in all our major institutions. Just sitting here listening to him speak, if you were on board that plane, wouldn't you be calmed? I I'm voting for Sally. I'd be I am <laughs> Sally. Voting for Thanks Captain Sallenberger. Captain, <laughs> Captain Wong. Nice to have you on. Be Thank you so you. much Thank again. You. The book, Making a Difference. And our in point with our panel is next.